All right, welcome back. This is the third episode, and I think we're getting better. You second think so? One, second one was much better than the first. So, and somebody said you shouldn't look back, but it's too late. I already did. Anyway, all righty. Well, on this week's, we got a couple things we want to talk about. First one, if you haven't paid any attention to the news, we, Louisiana is kind of on fire. On fire. Not in a good way. A, yeah, not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Western Louisiana, they've had some serious issues with fire, and we know some families over there. So, um, and then it, last night, this is, we're recording on Monday. Yeah, Monday. So, Sunday night or early Monday morning, they got some rain over there, which was much needed. So, mm-hmm. a lot of conspiracies, too. There's some, a lot of things going on in the news that is kind of weird, but even had the fires in Hawaii not too long ago. And someone said, Yesterday, we were talking to someone. They said uh, a lot more fires in Louisiana than we are we are aware of. Yeah. A few weeks ago, there was one on the east side over near I-10 near the Mississippi border. They had the interstate, I guess, closed down for it a It makes bit. me wonder what else we're not hearing, like if there are fires in other states that we're not hearing about. Uh, well, there's the big ones up in Canada still. So yeah, the world's on fire. I guess so. Um, well, you know, it's... Uh, we get talk about conspiracies and stuff. You know, the reality is, well, uh, first of all, who doesn't love a good conspiracy? <laughs> I think there are a I lot do. of people that don't. <laughs> well, you know who has two thumbs and loves a good conspiracy? <laughs> Who's that? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, the reality is, you know, our mm-hmm. our government, you know, whether these, some of these conspiracies are true or not, it, it's corrupt. And you know why it's corrupt? Because it's run by people, right? And they're run <laughs> and they're sinners. So, no matter how good of a government we mankind can come up with, eventually it's going to get corrupted. So we're no different than any nation in the history of the world. They had a rise and they had a fall. So I'm not saying that we're the America's going to fall, but it's possible. You know, it's just like any other kingdom in the rest of the world. So, but I do enjoy some. Good conspiracies. Well, there are a bunch out there right now, apparently, really concerning are, yeah. all yeah. these. I guess it's just really important to look back and see where our found it, where our solid foundation is. Right. Yeah, that's true. And for Christians, this world is not our home. And America, as great as I love this country, it's it's not my final destination. And if you read the Bible and the Book of Revelation, the end it doesn't end well. It's and a little rough. It's a little rough for those that are here. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on in the world, uh, some of these. And there are some convincing, I guess if you say conspiracies, that they're, they're going around. So, But just uh, we, we're praying for rain here in Louisiana. It's kind of weird. Uh, last year when we moved here, do you remember? I do. It rained literally every day for yeah. three weeks straight. It was like a mucky, marshy swamp. Everything yeah. we did was... And this year it's dry as, like, almost dry like Arizona dry. Yeah. It's crazy. Sahara. I mean, trees are dying. Ponds are drying up. It's It looks like fall outside with all the leaves falling down, and it's still and, early. Or, yeah. Well, we say early summer. I mean, it's August, mid almost the end of August. Yeah. But, but down here, that's still in the middle of summertime. It's <laughs> so, uncanny, pretty yeah. much, because you can almost ankle wade out into some of these ponds that oh, you yeah, could swim in before. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. So, anyway. But West Louisiana needs rain desperately. But now Florida's getting all that. Oh, yeah. As I meant to mention, yeah. I dare you. Tropical um, storm. Is it a hurricane now? I don't know. I anyway. know last I heard was tropical storm. So, Florida's getting kind of washed away. In fact, uh, Andrew, our son, was telling us a few weeks ago. They had flood warnings in the Ocala area yeah. where we used to live. Yeah. That I we lived there twenty years and never had a flood warning there. I it's know, amazing. And I wish that we could balance it out a little. Could you give them just a little uh, yeah, and us just a little, like, half and half? Well, what they need to do is <laughs> get some fans and just blow it. And anyway, <laughs> <laughs> blow that weather this way. Yeah. Anyway, so those, those are some things going on in the world. Uh, like I said, the fires in Louisiana, floods in Florida. Mm-hmm. Fires in Canada coming down, the smokes covering some of New York and those areas. Yeah, kind of all weird. All that um, in Hawaii. It's just and all that in Hawaii. It's yeah. Devastating. It's, it's weird, but mm-hmm. anyway, this week, last week we talked, or I say week, last episode. Sorry, we talked about sin and salvation. We this, did this week. I want to. 
continue that a little bit more on the salvation side than the sin side, because that's kind of depressing. I mean, to think about that we're all sinners, and we are. Saved by grace. Saved by grace. But the good news is the salvation part of it, because without that, there's really no hope. When you think about it. It is very true. It would be easy to get into a hopeless state, especially when you start t- thinking about all these things going on in the world. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> world's on fire and not looking good. Economy's not doing so great. It looks bleak. And it's an you, election year next year, and we all know what happens during an election year. Oh, uh, yeah. It gets a little, yeah. Hold on to your boots. Yeah. It's going to get a little bumpy. What did that, some guy said that one year, election year last time, November's going to be punched. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. <sighs> anyway, I think that was. He was a little off on that. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little but bit. November did get punched. Like, but it completely does wrong on every, all of it. Yeah. Except that because, oh, I mean, I don't know what he means true, by punched, true. but. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. We November use a election year always gets punched. Yeah. And pretty much the whole year before. Yeah. And here we are. So getting, hold on, people. Gonna be bumpy. Getting ready to happen. <laughs> but on the salvation side, so we talked about sin and why we need salvation, but let's talk more about the salvation side, because like I said, that's the good news. Yeah, let's get some good news in here. Exactly. So first of all, like I always like to define terms. Because that way you know where you're at. And we need to do that more often. We do, yes. <laughs> Communicate with each other. <laughs> this it's is what helpful. I heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I was going to say for marriage advice, <laughs> just a side note, a BTW, for those of you who, my age, that means by the way. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. <laughs> uh when you're in marriage, sometimes you need to say th- miscommunication. Yeah. This is what I heard. That way um, you can't say, well, I told you. Then your defense is, well, this is what I heard. Yeah, so, that was advice yeah. from a great friend in, on marriage advice. Yeah, a little older but than But I think us, it but. goes like this. This is what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's totally off subject. <laughs> Back to the topic. We'll do another <laughs> one on marriage, maybe. Anyway, so salvation, what is it? The definition is just the act of saving, preservation from destruction, or danger or great calamity. That's what the word itself means. Uh, In regards to biblical terms, it's God's plan of redeeming mankind. It's also, by the way, free. Amen. Now, everybody says there's nothing free. There's no free lunch. That is true. It's not free. Somebody paid for it, but Mm -hmm. you do not have to pay for it. It's free to you. It's free to us. Amazing. God paid for it. That, by the way, is a uh, it's an amazing thing when you think about the difference between what the Bible teaches with salvation versus what is out there in every other religion. And even yeah. I would say a lot of Christian denominations, mm-hmm. they have a form of some kind of works that you have to do something, which we as a human species, I guess, or mankind... We have this propensity to want to show our worth or to earn something to 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 show how good we are and Absolutely. what we deserve. Yeah, especially so. such a great gift. We're like, we can't just take that, right? But there's really nothing else to do. It's already been paid for, so Amen. we do, we can just rest in that fact. I'm I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but so when it comes to salvation, we defined what it was. Now, how do we get it? That is, and like we just were talking about, you can't earn it. You can't buy it. There's a story in uh, Acts. It's not regarding salvation, but Simon the sorcerer. I don't know if you remember it. I think it's Acts chapter 9, if I remember correctly. You want me to fact check? Uh, yeah, somebody else can, but okay. it's... Uh, <laughs> Peter was healing some people, given the Holy Ghost. Anyway, you can look it up. But Simon wanted that, and he offered to pay for it. Well, obviously, Peter said, you know, your money perish with you. You you can't buy your money's this. money's no good here. Your, your no, money's no good here. In fact, well, like uh, before that, this is earlier, I th- want to say Acts chapter 3, maybe 4, maybe even chapter 2, but no, it'd be 3 or 4. Peter is going to the temple, I think Peter and John, and there's a, a man that's lame there, and he's asking to be healed. Is and, that the song Peter and John went to pray? No. I don't know. 
Wrong one. Silver and gold have I none? <laughs> That's the song you're thinking Different of. Different <laughs> <laughs> They didn't. He couldn't pay for it, the healing, but they then they didn't have any money to give him. It, but what they gave him was the gift of healing. And so anyway, but when salvation comes, God set the plan up. He set the law to say, and man violated. God set the law with the penalty. In fact, a law without a penalty really is becomes more of a recommendation because it, yeah. a law has to have something behind it as a consequence by it has violating. To be recourse. And when man violated God's law, man had to pay for it. Mm-hmm. That was the animal sacrifice was just a substitute. It wasn't sufficient. And that's why, and it needed to be, in order to pay the debt of everybody, a perfect man had to be the one to pay the price. And that was Jesus Christ. So, so how do we get the salvation? The simple answer is you just believe. It's given to you. God provided it. And it's there. It sounds some, too easy. I, I know. It, it's just, that's it. It's just that simple. I, I was thinking, okay, what can I put with this? But it's just that simple. You believe that the blood that Jesus shed was the payment needed to pay the debt of sin. The debt of sin or the violation of the divine law that we all willfully broke. Mm. I, we're not... Sinners because, and I don't know if I mentioned this last time, we're not sinners because of Adam. We're sinners because we chose to sin. And that's an important point there. But the other part of this salvation is that what it does for us is when Christ rose again, it gave us the ability to become born again. You were born once, but like Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, you must be born again. What does that mean? It seems like, like Nicodemus, he had no idea what that meant. And on the Mike Charleston show, we talked about this, <laughs> John chapter three. Just recently. Just recently. You can check that out. <laughs> so if you don't check it out, I'm going to tell you here. The whole concept of being born again is you're now a new person. When you were born the first time, you were a new person, right? You're born again, you become a new person. Here's a question for you. You've had five kids. What part of the... Thank you for that painful <laughs> reminder. No. <laughs> what part of that birth process did the children help? Cognitively, none. No, they were just there, right? Yeah. You, they didn't really help at all. So they when really we're weren't born very again, helpful. There's nothing we can do. We can't help. We're just... We believe and it. God does all the work for us. So... It gives us the opportunity to be born again into the family of God, which makes us heirs with Christ. Paul says we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And do you have an idea what that means? Heirs and joint heirs? Right. I don't know where you're going with that, but... Well... Uh, you were supposed to give me a heads up when you asked me a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an heir to something, that means... Your royalty. Right. If you're a joint heir, so like, like when my parents died. Your co-owner. Right. When my parents died... Everybody had to agree to sign, all my siblings, we all had to agree to sign the house or to sign to sell the house. If one person didn't, we couldn't sell it. If we are joint heirs with Christ, in order for him to get his inheritance, we have to be there as well. That's an amazing thing, the thought to think that, that Mm -hmm. he cannot inherit his kingdom unless we're there with him to inherit it because we are are co-heirs with him. That's amazing. That's very cool. Yeah. We become new creations. Old Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. This is all off the top of my head, so sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking of this. I got notes, but I'm thinking of it more as I go along. But it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So whoever you were, whatever you were, it's gone. Mm-hmm. You are now a new person. So, And we're called saints. That's an interesting thing. We don't have, not like the Catholic Church where you have to go through this process and do a couple of miracles or whatever, and then you get designated by the Pope as a saint. Anyway, the other thing is, this, the, the, as all these things are great benefits, we also now have the power to overcome sin. We're no longer bound to sin. Hallelujah. And, yeah. So that's, 
That's how we get it. Basically, the short answer to that, again, is you believe it. God said it, you believe it, just like Abraham. Righteousness was imputed to right to Abraham when he believed God. What is exactly what is it exactly we're believing? You're believing that Christ shed his blood, made the payment of sin on your behalf, and rose again, and you can walk in newness of life and have eternal life. You are now taken out of the family of Adam and put into the family of God. Again, that sounds too easy. I know. <laughs> For such a big gift. It, it, it's it. But, and big's not even a good word. Right. When you think about what does God want us to do, the biggest form of worship to God, I would say, is he said something. We just believe what he said. We accept, when I say believe, we accept what he says as fact, as if it has already happened or will happen without any doubt or question. It plays into like a trust. Right. Yeah. It's so, I got a complete um, thought about our own children when you said that. Like when our children believe us and trust us. Exactly. That yeah. is a very high honor. Yeah. yeah that's, I, to me, that's mm-hmm. uh, one of the highest forms of worship mm-hmm. is that. Well, not that they worship us, but. Well, no, but I mean, well, in a sense, <laughs> yes, I mean, in a I, small I sense. Know. But, yeah, I know yeah. what you're saying. But that is yeah. a great honor when yeah. God said something, we don't experience it. Like, I can't say I experience what it means being a child of God or being born again. I can't give you what that was like as an experience. Right. I don't have to because I'm not the one who said it. <laughs> God was the one who said it just like Abraham. Mm-hmm. Abraham didn't at the time that God said, I'm going to make a great nation of you. He didn't have any kids. He didn't have anything to to relate to or to base it on experience. But he believed. But yeah, he believed. It's amazing. God said something. Abraham believed it and accepted it as fact. And God said, that's enough. That's all I need. And then he called him righteous for it. Right. So yeah, that's, the, that's how simple salvation is. We like to make things more complicated, but... Yeah, we do. Okay, so what happens next? Well, this we already talked about this. It's, uh, you know, we're born again. Look at John chapter 3, adopted into the family. We're crucified and raised again. Romans chapter 6, uh, you read the whole chapter. Another great chapter, another our verse is 2 Corinthians. Now I'm getting it mixed up. It's either 2 mm-hmm. Corinthians or 1 Corinthians 6, 9. I think it's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 12 or 11 or 12. Great verse, by the way. The other thing is we get as if all those things were not good enough. It just keeps getting better. It's like uh, I feel like one of those uh, <laughs> infomercials. Infomercials. But, but wait, wait, there's more. If you buy now. <laughs> if you believe now. Uh, yeah, if you believe now, there's more. To it. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, as it says in Ephesians chapter 1. If you, so what that means is like think of like an engagement. When we got engaged, what did I give you? A ring. A ring. And what did that ring signify? And a kiss, but am I oh. supposed to say that? <laughs> we'll edit that one out. <laughs> so, am I blushing? Yeah. <laughs> what did that ring signify? Um, meaning like eternal love, eternal well, no, just, value. It meant that you, I the, was yours. Right. Was, uh, what does a marriage ring signify? I mean, not a marriage ring, a engagement ring. Engagement ring. Oh, that we're going to get married. Right. Sorry, it's I didn't know where you're promise, going with that. Right? I mean, it's just that simple. It's <laughs> right. You I mean, also gave me a promise ring. Well, that's true. Before but, that, yeah. the real ring. Yeah. So the Holy <laughs> Spirit is our promise, our seal, our engagement ring, if you will. That one day our our spirits are saved, our bodies are yet to be saved and glorified. So the Holy Spirit is given as a seal that one day that marriage will take place. So that's, and that's kind of why we use the engagement ring. That's the symbolism of it. So that's um, about it on salvation. Those are the benefits of salvation. And it's, to me, it's just amazing. It's so simple. We try to make it so complicated and we don't need to. It's just, just believe what God said. And it's just absolutely amazing. Simple and easy. Simple and easy. Different from Where's that button? your Wing Chun, right? That was easy. Well, that's so okay. So that it's, some things are easy or some things are simple. That doesn't necessarily mean they're easy. Keep that in mind. Which it's hard to wrap your brain around that. But when I was doing the Wing Chun stuff with you, the martial arts, that yeah. what they call it, yeah. self-defense stuff, whatever. And the, the 
sensei or whatever you call him, the teacher was saying symbol. It'd be called Sifu. And, Sifu. Because it's Chinese. But anyway, okay, the Sifu. I mean, teacher. Got you. Yeah. The Sifu then. <laughs> anyway, he would say simple, but not easy. And I was kind of like, what does he mean? And then when I got in there and I realized, it's all about a yielding, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's up Which somewhat, does kind of yeah, make me a, come back to this whole believe thing. Yield. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop fighting it. You're created in the image of of God. Right. It's in there. You know it's in there. You're just fighting it. Right. By Believe. And, and what really, when you think about it, what more can you add to what God had already did? Done did. Yeah. You, you're going to give him money? It's a done deal. I mean, he already owns the universe. And what? Yeah. You're going to be good enough? You can't be. It's just, you've already proven through your life that you can't be good Simple. enough. Simple. So. Yeah. And easy. Yeah. So, all righty. Well, that's that on that. Unless you have one more thing or anything. I think I'm good there. All righty. Well, yeah. let's move on well to said. the next segment. All right. What's the, our next segment? The let's get personal. Let's get personal. <laughs> However, before we do that, we got to get a word from our sponsor. What? Another sponsor. Another yeah. sponsor. So, How do we do this? Well, you know, it's just the great marketing I have to <laughs> go out and reach these sponsors. From our whole two listeners. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So this week's sponsor, mm-hmm. have you ever noticed that there's people walking around with saggy pants? Mm, sadly. Yeah. Have you noticed that there's people walking around that aren't working? Yep. Well, what they need is our sponsor this week. Really? Yes. Oh, tell us about it. Well, first of all, have you ever felt also like a walking around like a two-year-old with a saggy diaper waddling around? Nope. Well, what you need... <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Give me about 20 years and maybe I'm... <laughs> what you need is today's sponsor. Our today's sponsor is Work Belts. Work Belts. Yes. Okay. Are you tired of saggy britches? We got a fix for that. Are you tired of plumber's crack? We got a hack for that. <laughs> Work Belts. Work Belts have been keeping men's pants up and women's since 1825. Work belts can be found in fine and not so fine retail stores in your area. Awesome. So go out and get you a work belt and get back to work. <laughs> That's this week's sponsor. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Yay, we love our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, on to let's get personal. Okay, let's get personal. What do you got for this week? What did we get? Um, you know, we've been renovating this house, this thing we've been talking about for Ever. a year. <laughs> I know, a year feels like forever, doesn't it? And we... That's How good. You doing? Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Sold it. We sold it. Yay. And... Bought another one. Same day. Same day. We closed. D- different tables. We closed that on both of them on the same day. Yes, we did. We bought, a, we sold a house and then bought a house. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. And then we've been working it's a big on that. Praise. One. Yeah. Because that was definitely not sure. We, I mean, we thought we'd, we thought it would happen, but there were a lot of uncertain days. Yeah. I feel like for the last four years, <laughs> all I've been doing was remodeling house, a house of some sort. And Our guess house, what? Yeah. And I got more to do. <laughs> so, the saga was, continues. Yeah. <laughs> I had to finish our house in Florida before we sold it. So, And I've been working on that for a while. You had. We had. We I, had. I yeah. helped a little. And then we bought the house in Clinton, which needed a lot of work. More work than we... Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> and then we bought this one, which needs a little bit of work, mm. not a lot. I mean, cosmetic stuff, yeah. not much. So yeah. anyway. We have a lot of great ideas for yeah. it, but... Not sure that we should put that much into it. Yeah. All right. What else you got? But for now, we're not in the Charleston's backyard yeah, anymore. We're not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're happy. Okay. I have a personal question for you. Uh oh. Maybe I asked this one, but I don't remember. Okay. What would you say? I actually got two. Okay. Because I don't think people know this. Maybe you said it, but I don't remember. All right. Where were you born? Oh. Louisiana. Yeah, where at? You, Full circle, right back here, Monroe. Well, not back here. Monroe's way well, up north. Well, Monroe's three hours north. Yeah, it's up in the north. But country. I mean, I'm back to the state. In the north. Yeah, back yeah. to the state. I visited there. That's visited right. my sweet aunt. All right. Next question. What is your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby. I think everyone who knows me knows this. 
don't you think? Probably. Probably, because I mean, I'm doing it a lot. Yeah. Jigsaw puzzles. Yeah, jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> I like crossword puzzles too, but jigsaw puzzles yeah. are favorite because it's social. I can sit. Not necessarily. Not always. I do them sometimes alone, but I, I prefer to have people around. Yeah. Not necessarily doing the puzzle with me, but talking. Well, that's true. I mean, if they don't, yeah, they can if they want to join. But yeah, I do like that. Okay. How about I ask you a couple questions now? Oh, boy. These are always fun. Okay. Here we go. Favorite. You're going to like this one, actually. Oh, I'm sure. This is easy. When they start with favorite, I always... Right. That's... Favorite fishing and or hunting trip memories. Fishing, hunting, hunting, fishing. Um, that's a tough one. I, well, because I... I don't know if this would be my favorite, but it's the one I remember the most when we got lost, not you and I, but as two other friends of mine, we, we literally got lost on the, uh, out in the, not way out in the Gulf. It was inshore. It's kind of a swampy area on the West side of Florida. It's called off the coast. It's near a little city called Yankee town. There's a lot of saltwater marshes out there. And we got lost. <laughs> Why would that be a favorite, though? I, well, there were some adventures there. I mean, it, so it, kind of a funny that's stories. Really gonna, that's really going to bash up my my next question. Oh. Well, Can you think uh, of a different one? A different, uh, another favorite one? Yeah, because my next one was, what's your craziest fishing oh, hunting sorry. experience? Oh, <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> A favorite hunt of fishing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a time uh, I went out. We were uh, another friend of mine. We were at uh, Crystal River all day. Uh, not Crystal River. I'm sorry. Um, Cedar Key. In Florida. In Florida. And uh, we caught a ton of redfish. We could all, at the time, and I think it's still the case, you could only keep one per person. But we caught a bunch of them. That was, yeah. that was a lot of fun that day. Really fun. Um. And then you like to scallop. I guess that's not oh, yeah. really fishing. Another favorite one. This, I got a lot because we used to go fishing all the time. Yeah. I went, I took Jonathan and Andrew. We took the canoe out. We went out uh, at, at Yankee Town. You have to see the area. Anyway, if we were out probably, I'd say a good 500 yards from the shore. This was with you and Jonathan and Andrew. And Andrew. Okay. We got out there and there's nobody there. A parking lot, it's a boat ramp. Parking lot's empty. There's a little beach area where you put, we put in the canoe there and we paddled out to this. There's a lot of oyster bar islands out there. We paddled out to one. Like I said, it was a good maybe half a mile. I said 500 yards, but probably a little further than that. It's probably, probably a half a mile. Nobody there. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, I didn't check the weather. <laughs> I should have, but a storm came in. Mm -hmm. But while we were there, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting them mixed up. But while we were there, the wind picked up. I thought that was with like you and Amanda. And well, that was another canoe. time. Oh, <laughs> so oh, wow. I told the, the boys were little. And I said, you know what? We better go in because this is getting. And y'all were just in the canoe. Yeah. Okay. So I end up. Fortunately, it's low tide and it's real shallow out there. I end up having to walk the canoe back in because the wind was too strong. But mm -hmm. that was another story with Amanda and Riley. That, that, oh, was, yeah. that was really bad. That's but probably on the crazy one. Anyway, so I, yeah, there's a lot of stories on that. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to go so fishing. So what about favorite hunting? Favorite? Other than the time you and I got to spend two hours up in a <laughs> that, blind. Yeah. That was my favorite. Uh, well, the favorite one was the deer I shot. That, that was actually deer. my only hunting experience. Yeah. By the way. That's yeah. BTW. I got a couple of... <laughs> Yeah, when you actually got the deer, that was awesome. That was an awesome because a friend of mine is a small area, manage, uh, wildlife management area, public lands in Florida. We'd hunt this area. It was the last day of the hunt. A friend of mine called me the night before and said he couldn't make it. I'd already seen deer that day, but mostly does. There was one little buck, but he was too, it was too small. And I was getting ready to leave. And I stood up, I was up in a tree stand and a climber and uh, I stood up and I saw this big buck. I mean, literally just probably 20 yards from me. And he looked at me and I froze. <laughs> I was like, I'm standing up in the tree, my rifles across the, the bars and the deer staring at me. And I'm like, he is going to run. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that deer put his head down, I picked up my rifle and shot right at him and he took off. <laughs> I was like, ah, I missed. But I didn't. I got ran over there, and anyway, 
he did run about, I don't know, 50 yards or so. And then the but, funny thing about that is you called me and yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember that day you were just so pumped. You were oh, like, yeah. The adrenaline was going You're like, I'm going to be later than I thought. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I, was I a, shot it was one. A, it was a 10 point. <laughs> yeah. The other one was, was nice. uh, I was with Jonathan Andrew. We were with another friend of mine and his kids, but we were separated. And we were sitting in a ground blight, and it was getting cold. And they were getting antsy. I think they were probably eight, nine years old, something like that. I said, you know what? Let's pack up and let's go for a walk. Just walk down the trail. Because it was almost dark anyway. They were behind me about, I don't know, 20 feet or so. And I saw this hog come out. But the hog couldn't see me because the, the brush was, I was... He, where he was, he couldn't see past it, but I could see over him. And I told the boys to stop. They stopped. And I just, but the hog was so close. I couldn't, I was trying to get between the scope to see the the barrel sights to aim. And I just figured it's close enough. If I point in that direction, I'm going to hit it, which I did. But I didn't realize I, um, it was such a quick shot because the hog was moving. And when I turned around, John goes, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I think I shot it. He goes, yeah, you're bleeding. I'm like, what? The the scope hit me right across the nose and split my nose <laughs> or that right here. And mm-hmm. um, I but, remember that. But we got the hog, and yeah, it was a lot it's of an fun. Awesome God makes there's some other to stories to that too. But anyway, yeah. it's getting kind of long. There but, was more than that. But that was that more was a lot that. of fun. Yeah, a lot of good stories, that good is. memories. But so now, what about your craziest? <laughs> well, I'd say the the one we got lost on that was that was like yeah, that two was, days. Where was that again? That was a uh, Yankee town. We started off in Crystal River, which is a little further south. Back in Florida. Still. Yeah, yeah, back in Florida. And we camped out on an island there, which is a crazy story anyway. <laughs> that trip started off bad from the beginning. <laughs> um, I don't know how much. I'm the only one who brought a tent. And it was supposed to be a three-man tent, but they're not really made for three men. Especially. Maybe two at the most. <laughs> I made the mistake of getting in first, which was a bad idea. <laughs> And then one guy and then the next guy. But the guy in the middle, (laughs) I don't know how to say this delicately. (laughs) He had a gas issue. (laughs) I ended up sleeping out on the ground and uh, (laughs) worried and kept waking up because of raccoons. (laughs) We get up the next morning. So when we tied the boat down that evening... Tide was really high. So in Florida, a couple times a year, you get these really high tides and really low tides. And it was that it's September in the fall and spring. You get these really extremely high and extremely low tides. Anyway, extremely high tide. We tie the boat up. Next morning, we wake up. Well, if you get a really high tide, guess what you get coming after it? A really low tide. Mm -hmm. The boat's like 20 feet from the water (laughs) and dry ground. We had to kind of lift it and shimmy it to the water, but that's how the trip started. Fished around there, didn't catch anything. We decided to pack up and drive north up to this little town called Yankee Town. Yankee Town is near a boat ramp. You In between the two was the Crystal River power plant. It was a nuclear power plant at one time and it had these giant smokestacks. You could literally see them from miles out in the water. They were so tall, and they are used as a marker. We fished around Yankee Town for a while. We went out a little offshore to get into what was called the grass flats, where the it get, the water gets really clear, and there's just a lot of seagrass. There's a lot of good fishing out there. Anyway, coming back, it kind of raining and stuff, summertime, late summer. Like I said, it was September, so water w- tides going out. We ran out of gas. We could not find our way because of one guy, instead of going to the main boat ramp that you can see for miles, he wanted to put in on this little boat ramp off a dirt road kind of back in the swamps that mostly airboats use because it gets really shallow, really rocky. And anyway, and you really need to know the area really well, which we didn't. (laughs) Coming back, the boat ran out of gas. The water's going out. And we could not find the inlet to get back to the boat ramp. You didn't mark an X on the tree. Yeah. (laughs) Then literally the the water was gone. The tide went out and it was just muck. But because it's a, a marsh, you could see for miles. We could see the truck. It was probably close to a mile away. Wow. We had to hike through the marsh to get to the truck. 
in the dark by the time we got almost to the truck it was dark and so we're walk, stomping through this yeah. marsh in the dark and, and that was when there were no cell phones yeah, so we didn't have a cell I phone. am home with the baby and I have no clue where yeah. you are so it, that all was a wild day, trip we, and then night. the next day so we took the battery from the truck the next morning we got gas took the battery from the truck because we, we used the trolling motor wore the battery down on the boat the tide's going out again but there's still water, and so we had to walk back through the marsh. This time it's sloshy because the, the tide was in, and it's starting to go out again. We get to the boat. We we marked the boat with a paddle and a high-vis hat Okay. so we could find it again. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> we get back, and we're like, oh, you just got to go around to the next bin, and you go in, you'll find the, the boat ramp. It didn't work. We ran mm. out of gas again. Uh. It just... It, <laughs> It was so bad. We ended up, we got so sunburned. I mean, like I had blisters on my face. It just, I looked like something from a. Tell a, about a, the fruit. Oh, we found a fruit tree. That, a fruit. A fruit tree. <laughs> orange tree. Sorry. This was a wild orange tree. And I don't know if, if you've never had a wild orange tree. I think tree. we could call that one fruit. <laughs> They look amazing. Because it wasn't real fruit. <laughs> but they are not sweet. Oh, <laughs> Wild so oranges sour. are, uh, think of a lemon, mm. but like On five steroids. times <laughs> more sour. It was yeah. just, we were so hungry. We saw those oranges and it was like, whoa, that's amazing. Manna from we heaven. We ripped into that. I took a bite and it felt like my face was being <laughs> sucked into it. <laughs> so it was so sour. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the, um, I went and this other guy, we were walking because we actually found a road. And my, I said, let's just walk out to the road. We'll find somebody. They'll get us back to the truck. Anyway, he disagreed. But we said, hey, let's take back an orange. <laughs> and <laughs> Give it to we did. And he saw the oranges and he was like me. He was Aww. like, oh, this is so amazing. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it because we, we knew it was going to happen, and oh, he was so mad at us. But we got lost again, mm. ran out of gas. It was just obviously we found our way back. But and the moral of the story is probably pick your fishing mates wiser. Well, and this is what I said. I said let's <laughs> just wiser. take the boat, and I said this the day before. I said let's just go to the main boat ramp where you can because you had those smokestacks from the power plant. That as a marker, we could just head south that way and just keep those as our heading, and it would have taken us to the boat, the main boat ramp. Yeah. And I said, somebody will give us a ride. If not, we could just walk. It's like five miles, but still, we could have walked back around to the truck. Oh, no, 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 we'll find it. We'll find it. We kept saying, because there was a fishing camp. They said, you, we got to find the power lines to the fishing camp, and that'll tell us the right channel to go down. The only problem with that was we discovered you had to be halfway in the right channel before you could see the power lines to get back to the boat ramp. So we're looking for something that we were never going to find because it wasn't there. But So that's my story of being <laughs> lost at sea. <laughs> if it's any consolation, I would have followed you. Ah, thanks. Well, because I have horrible direction <laughs> yeah, anyway. <that's>, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have been questioning you. But yeah, it's that boat ramp. Like mm -hmm. I said, if you've ever, you, you have to know the area. You can see those smokestacks literally miles, miles out. Because it's the sea, it's flat, and you can, you know, they're so tall, yeah. and that would have got us right to the boat ramp. And, yeah. but no, they. But no. Didn't want to listen to me anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other wild hunt, real quick. Uh, the hunting story. We're up in Apalachicola in Florida. There's a late muzzle loading season. It's in February. I don't know if they still do it. I haven't done it in a long time. I first time I went up there is with uh, these other guys, and the one guy. We get up there and it's dark. Because it's February, it gets dark early. He wants to check out where to put his tree stand. I'm like, what, what are you going to see? It's dark. I mean, there's, it's cloudy. It's, there's no stars, no moon. It's dark. He goes, well, I just want to go in the woods just a little bit. We'll leave the lights on in the truck, and we'll, I just want to get a feel for it. I'm like, all right, whatever. So we go out there. We're out there in the woods. We didn't go very far in. The guy with the truck, what he didn't know about his truck was the lights shut off automatically after a certain amount of time. Mm. So we walk in the woods and we only wow. walk maybe 100 feet, if that, off the road into the woods. But no one took a flashlight because they thought they didn't need it because... Yeah, I, um, I took a flashlight, but um, what have, I, didn't, it, what doesn't, I didn't want to use it completely because... Batteries go dead, and then and right. I wanted to use it sparingly. 
we're in the woods. He's looking around. He's like, okay, yeah, let's go. And everybody looks at each other and we're like, where's the truck? Which way was it? The lights went out in the truck and now it's pitch black. We're in the woods and they're like, well, I think it's this way. And I'm like, guys, we can't keep, we can't just walk in the woods. We don't know which direction. Nobody had a compass. We didn't even know which way, you know, if we had a compass where anything was. They start walking and I'm praying because it's starting to get cold. And um, I said, guys, we can't walk because we don't know where we're going. We could be going the opposite way from the truck and getting further into the woods. There were three of you? Four total, including myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're walking and I'm praying. And I said, guys, look, we got to turn around. We got to go the other way. I'm pretty sure it's the other way. And this was actually, this is really God because I had no idea where it was. I didn't, I just had this feeling. And just for the record, these are different guys than the fishing trip. Yeah, yeah so, different guys. So maybe they were going to listen to you? Well, finally they did. We turned around and we just started walking and we came out to the road and from the road we could find the truck. And so yeah. we did. As soon as we got back to our campsite, it started raining and it got down below freezing. We wow. woke up with ice on the ground. If we would have stayed in the woods or got lo- further lost in the yeah. woods, kept going the way they wanted, it would have gotten bad, yeah. seriously bad. So, For sure. So that was a God thing. That was kind of a... Another Wild thank you, Jesus. Story. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so sure. moral of that story is don't go in the woods at night without a light or knowing where <laughs> you're at, light. for sure. <laughs> yes. But anyway, yeah. those, are, those are some wild stories. But And with experience, you've Comes gained down. knowledge. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's about it. So um, something to remember, uh, a closing words here. Just remember, God gives you two sets of teeth. The third set you have to pay for yourself. <laughs> Take care of them. (laughs) 